Hey YouTube, I'm back on another deck profile. In this one, we're going to be doing Shadow Paladin. So Shadow Paladin has always been one of my favorite clans. It's always been a very popular clan. It still is, even today, despite it not doing too well. Um, it, I feel that in the meta right now, it is overplayed and it underperforms. And if you look at the results statistically, compared to other clans like Bermuda Triangle and Kagero, for instance, so, but that's not going to keep me away from playing the deck. Uh, I've always liked Shadow Paladin. In fact, they might be my favorite clan overall. Um, but, yeah. So, I built the deck. This is what it is. Uh, in terms of Revengers, I always like Revengers, but I'm not sure I'm going to play Revengers when they come out. Uh, end of this month, probably not. I'm probably going to go Silverthorn instead, since I don't really uh, play this game that much anymore. Uh, I, I'm only going to try to build like one new deck at a time. So in this case, it's definitely going to be Silver Thorn since this deck is still relatively good. So let's get into the deck profile. Four Phantom Blaster Dragon. He's your main uh, Grade Three Vanguard. He does Phantom Blaster things like gain power and critical, like he always did in the past. Uh, so basically, his he only has Vanguard effects. He's got Gift. So you you kind of want to use him as the main Vanguard. You never want to use him as a rear guard. Back of grade three, uh, because he has no regard effect. In fact, the build that I'm going with uh, doesn't use any Vanguard that runs a regard effect or a grade three with a regard effect. So the back of one is Gust Blaster Dragon. I might try. Um, I'm thinking of going back to the Dark Dictator because what my original Shadow Paladin deck was basically the trial deck with a few single cards just mixed in. Um, but I, I swapped out the Dark Dictator for Gust Blaster Dragon. Um, he's surprisingly an, a very uh, cool cool card to use. But he is very dependent on a uh, blaster. So you have to have... Uh, you, basically, you have to re-ride. He, he, he cannot be the... He can be the first grade 3 ride, but it will be suboptimal. So he's basically the end game one, the late game one that you want to like re-ride to do his effect where he gets the critical to pressure the opponent with his main attack when he attacks. So that's the great three lineup. It's pretty straightforward. It's the fan it's uh, blasters, basically, Phantom and Blaster. Uh, so great twos. Of course we are running Blaster Blade. For some reason my tri my trial deck was uh, had this thing in it. So I've got four Blaster Dark. Did I say Blaster Blade? Blaster Dark of course. Blaster Dark, he's pretty cool. Um, I like him. I wish that I didn't have to make a Shadow Paladin deck that relies on him, but I think right now uh, it's still the best one out there. Uh, next, four Dark Bond Trumpeteer. Uh, it's just really good at setting up the board with the 5k rear guard. Um, that's why I run it. So four of it sets up real well. Uh, we'll go into some other cards in the Grade 1 lineup that explains why we're running this at 4. I mean, you could run 3 if you want, but I'm running 4. If you're not, if you're going to run 3 of that, then I would say run 4 of this next card, which I'm only running 3 of. Darkness Maiden Maka. She's always been one of my favorite Shadow Paladin cards since way back. Uh, except when Revengers came out, then you didn't really see much of this. Actually, never really saw much of this at all after the initial Shadow Paladin deck, which was pretty much trash compared to... Um, its rival, which was the end at the back in the day. Um, so three Maka because she basically the thing about her or the thing about the new Shadow Paladin style that I don't really like is they limit their call capability. They used to be able to call Grade Ones out of the deck, and basically you filter the deck so the likelihood of you uh, drive checking a trigger goes up. A lot of their cards have lost that ability. Like, instead of her calling a card from the deck, she calls a card from the hand. So she basically does, like, an op mile skill, which is really strange. You superior call, draw a card, and she gets 5,000 power. So, pretty straightforward, but it's counterblast heavy. This whole deck is very counterblast heavy. Um, so, in order to counteract that, we have to run cards that can countercharge. And right now, there's really only, like, one option. Um, but for grade ones... For Skull Witch Nevin, because you need targets for uh, Dark Bond Trumpeteer. Um, and then later on, you can use her effect to rest and then call another grade, 
a 5k but this is not the primary target for dark trumpeteer this is something that uh you would want to call using like a maka skill because maka will gain 5,000 if this is called behind her then it won't really matter too much uh, but then you can also have the option to use nevin to call out this card we're going for blackwing swordbreaker but blackwing swordbreaker is the primary target for dark bond trumpeteer so those two cards work well and then maka and nevin sort of work semi well together but of course trumpeteer and nevin also work well if nevin's in your uh if nevin's able to do the skill or actually no i take that back um these two these two can work well together uh, because you don't have to rest this thing to do its skill it can still do its skill uh, and then to unflip, like I said earlier, I am running three Black Sage Sharon. Now, I probably am going to bump this up to four. I do have a fourth one, but I wanted to run another grade one. And the one I chose is Apocalypse Bat. Uh, just because I feel like the cool thing about Apocalypse Bat is if you do manage to ride him as your grade one, you can call out your starter. So you can actually call out the starter and have an extra uh, retire target. So that's why I went with him. So basically he free, he gets a free uh, extra regard to the field early from the soul. If you manage to ride him as Vanguard. If not, then um, if you do have one of him in the soul, like if you rode him, uh, then the, the likelihood of him being able to call himself to the field is increased. So the only thing about him though, is that if you want to do that, the problem that I've run into is that I probably want to run... In playtesting the deck, I really want more Charon and more Apocalypse Bat. So I'm probably going to bump both of them to 4 and drop uh, the 5k guys down to down by 1. But these two have also been really useful in most of the games. So it's kind of, I don't know, especially because I'm running Dark Bond Trumpeteer. So ideally, I might try 4 Maka, 3 Trumpeteer, and then 4 of each of these and only 3 of the other 2 grade ones. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, in terms of the grade one and two lineup, how you guys would do it. Uh, I think mine's pretty unique. I don't see a lot of people running Apocalypse Bat in my area, so I kind of try to stand stand out with a unique build in that regard. But for the trigger lineup, it's not unique at all. It's pretty much the standard one that everybody's playing. Dark Shield McLear, he's the draw trigger sentinel. And then you've got the eight criticals and the four heals. And of course, full battle is a starter. So that's basically the Shadow Paladin deck profile. Let me know what you guys think, what you would change or tweak, or what you're running. And if you're looking forward to running Revengers, uh, let me know in the comments uh, what's your deck build going to be. And depending on what I see, I may potentially build it, but probably not uh, immediately. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.